everybody. Welcome to another episode of Mike Likes. I'm Mike. And tonight I thought I would show you guys how I use an ASI Air mini computer to do some EAA, which is Electronically Assisted Astronomy. And what EAA allows you to do is to observe very faint, very dark, deep sky objects that you wouldn't ordinarily be able to see from a suburban driveway. So we're gonna go out to my Bortle 6, Bortle 7-ish suburban driveway, and we're gonna take pictures. So if you notice already, my telescope, this is a Schmidt Cassegrain C8, you know, garden variety orange tube. I've got the Hyperstar on it and my camera, which is an ASI 294MC. And on the back, where you'd normally have your visual diagonal, I just have a plastic blocker. And this telescope is running in what we call astrograph mode. That's a telescope that specifically takes pictures. Uh, you might know it as a Raza, um, and this is modified. So I've gone ahead and I've removed my secondary mirror, and I've gone ahead and put on the Hyperstar, which you can see over here. Now, the ASI Air Mini computer rides over here. I have it mounted uh, to the you know fixed points, just like a, a finder scope. The ASI Air is mounted. I've got power coming from my mount into the ASI Air Mini, and I've got, on this blue cable, a USB going to the camera. So in just a few moments, I'm going to be able to use my iPad to control my entire telescope. Now, we're going to do a quick... Uh, Celestron star sense alignment. So the telescope is going to get a rough alignment with the uh, with the star sense camera. And from there, I'll show you guys what we're doing here. <laughs> Pardon the mess, I'm using it as a desk, but we're going to control the iPad. We're gonna control the telescope with the iPad and I'm gonna record the iPad screen with my MacBook Pro. So it's a, it's a whole setup here. Um, you can see this is my secondary mirror. When you use a Hyperstar, the secondary mirror ends up in a nice little holding place, including the ring that retains it. So it's just brilliant engineering by Star Arizona. I think I've mentioned them before. Uh, this is my faithful red lamp. So you definitely want one of those. And if we go over here, and pardon my kids toys in the mess of my garage. We've got a Batonoff mask, which we're going to use for focusing. We're gonna make sure a star has nice diffraction spikes to be focused. And you can see my Celestron hard dew shield, which is gonna protect the entire telescope from dew and frost and anything like that. And of course, when I store the telescope with the Hyperstar on, you're going to need that as well. This is what the Hyperstar comes in. So they give you a nice little case. And there's the you know front cover of the telescope without the Hyperstar and the dew shield cover. So those are the supplies. In a moment here, I'm gonna go ahead and take the telescope out and complete the star sense alignment. I'll show you guys in quick speed how that works, but feel free to check out my other videos on my channel. Uh, it goes all over star sense and how that works. It's very helpful to get a rough alignment. The nice thing about it is right now, I don't know if this telescope is in focus. It could be, but temperatures vary in my garage by tens and dozens and twenties of degrees. So I might have to refocus, but the camera doesn't care. It knows where the stars are. It's gonna take fresh pictures and it's always focused. So I don't have to use a visual diagonal to get my focus first. I can do this all blind and then just make sure that my focus is correct on the iPad or computer if you're preferring to do it that way. And I have another EAA video, but the difference is I'm going to control this with the iPad app from ASI and not from the Mac app. So there's the difference. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've connected our dew shield here. It's just a metal tube, and it's the official Celestron one. You can see it has this very nifty pass-through, and it can do the pass-through for the camera and the dew heaters and all that kind of thing. We're not going to do a very long session, so I won't need dew heaters, but you can see what's going on. I have the cable draped kind of as straight as possible. You're not going to see the cable um, just by the way the optics optical train works, but just so you know, and it doesn't really matter that the camera is upside down or any which way because there's no right side up or down in space and we can move our photos however we want to because it's treated just like any other JPEG. A um, couple of other things here, just to save ourselves the hassle. Uh, you can see that I have made sure that my telescope is kind of aligned horizontally. That's important for the StarSense camera to do what it needs to do. And I don't have the legs extended on my telescope. I want it to be as stable as possible since I'm not gonna physically stand at the scope. It doesn't really matter. My comfort is immaterial because all I'm gonna do is focus a little. And you can buy automatic focusers. I don't have one. Uh, it's just a luxury that I don't need. I'll do the focus with the Batonoff mask and um, we'll go from there. All right, so I'll see you guys outside.
All right, so we're outside here. We can see that our star sense is ready for alignment. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And um, that takes about two minutes. I have a separate video for that, so I won't waste the time here. We're gonna get that alignment done and then we'll go over to the iPad. Just to show you guys here, I've gone ahead and got the alignment done. I've got my Batonoff mask on. Now my telescope is looking at Jupiter for the purposes of focusing. So you can see that bright star up there, that's actually Jupiter tonight. And we're gonna go ahead and focus that on the iPad. But to give you an idea of the light pollution in my area, look, my neighbor's lights are on, there's street lights, there's everything. So this is a suburban neighborhood. There's no dark skies or anything, but we're gonna see some really cool stuff. All right, let's go to the iPad. Okay, so here we are in ASI Air. It's an app on my iPad. And I'm going to take the first picture, which is a one second exposure, which is now coming in. And we can see we're way out of focus. That's the Batonoff mask. So it's actually looking at the Batonoff mask instead of looking at the uh, Jupiter. That's ostensibly way up in the sky behind the Batonoff mask. So let's adjust this a little bit. Okay, I've gone ahead and made some adjustments, and you can see that we've got perfect diffraction spikes on the planet of Jupiter. And if you look underneath the diffraction spikes, you can even see the blur of little moons uh, underneath Jupiter. But yeah, this is what you want when you're using a bad enough mass. You want that diffraction spike where the star looks like almost like an asterisk. That means that you're going to be in focus. And I'm going to take the bad enough mask off, and it should tell us that you know we've got a nice dot there, which is the planet. All right, and with the Batonoff mask off, we can see that we've got a nice big blur. That's Jupiter. It's obviously overexposed, but that's okay because we're at half a second, which is more than enough. And all the other stars are pinpoints of light, which is what we want. Now, the first um, object I'm looking at tonight is the California Nebula. And you can see that I'm able to resolve this with barely 10 seconds of exposure. And I'm already stacking them. I've stacked three. And yeah, we're seeing an object that can't really be seen with the naked eye in visual astronomy from the Bortle 6, Bortle 7 driveway that I have here at home. But because our telescope is operating at f1.9 instead of f10 or f6.3, we get this kind of exposure in, what, 10 seconds? And it's on my iPad. I can save this. I can share it. And I'm able to show anybody that wants to see, hey, this is up there and this is gorgeous. Uh, is this going to win astrophotography photo of the month or the year? Absolutely not. But are you going to be able to see stuff that you couldn't see with your naked eye? Absolutely. So that's really the magic of EAA. I think for our purposes, I'll go to one more iconic showpiece object. We'll go to the Horsehead Nebula in Orion. We'll take a look at that. So I've gone ahead and I've set my telescope to go to the star Alnitak, which is neighbors with the Flame Nebula, which you can see in the top of the image, and the Horsehead at the bottom there. Um, center bottom and you can see I'm just kind of playing with the histogram a little bit to bring out the shadows and the highlights just to resolve it a little better and like I said with the California Nebula this is not going to be the kind of horsehead nebula that you frame necessarily but look you're seeing an object that can't even be seen with a 24 inch Dobsonian telescope with an 8 inch telescope in your light polluted driveway and it's pretty good you can save this picture and post it to Instagram right from your iPad you can be warm in your home or in your garage and the telescope's out, it's about 45 degrees Fahrenheit outside, so it's freezing, but I'm comfortable here and I'm just having a, you know, a warm cup of uh, tea and I'm um, looking at the Horsehead Nebula and I can flip this or invert it or do whatever I need to. Remember, there's no upside down or right side up in space, so it's whatever we want it to be. And the power of ASI Air or the ASI desktop tools on Macs and PCs is just really cool stuff and it makes it so easy. So yeah, it's already stacked, what, 10 at this point? And it could stack, you know, dozens to hundreds of exposures. Now you do see some light pollution. That is the city of Cincinnati, um, which is to myself. And yeah, it cuts through it, but it does uh, play an impact on our EAA, but we cut through it and we're able to see the objects that we want to see. If I took this telescope 40 minutes out of town to a Bortle 4 sky, a lot of that light wash would disappear. But those are my neighbor's lights and they built a Costco here recently. So you can see that it does play an impact. So yeah, we're recording the Horsehead Nebula now and you can see that the telescope's just doing its thing. And it's staring right there. Over the roof of the house, you can see Orion's belt, the three stars. It's staring at the all in the tech there. Pretty neat. All 
right, guys. Well, thanks for joining me again. If you like what we're doing here, please like and subscribe. It helps so much to grow the channel and keep doing astronomy like we enjoy. And um, clear skies. And I'll see you again next time.